Welcome to Black Gems Unearthed. I'm Jazz and I'm learning black history in Massachusetts, my home state. Recently, I've been reading about the end of slavery in Massachusetts and that has led me on a somewhat long car ride out to Central Mass to the small town named Barrie. I came out here to follow the footsteps of Quap Walker. Have you heard of him? If you have it, you need to know him because he was like many black people who were enslaved, frustrated about his condition, and he turned that frustration into action, and he tried to liberate himself from his enslavement. His pursuit of freedom led to an important turning point in ending slavery in Massachusetts. So let's get into his story. Quap was born in 1753 into slavery. His parents were Mingo and Dinah, and they were purchased by James Caldwell, who lived in Barrie. And Quap was a baby at that time. He was purchased with his parents, and so he became the property of James Caldwell. But James promised that Quap could have his freedom when he turned 25. Ain't that nice? Freedom for your birthday. What, what a good gift. I wonder if he offered him some cake to go with it, maybe some balloons, a party. Unfortunately, James was hit by a falling tree limb and he passed away in 1763. Quap was just 10 years old at the time. So that meant that all bets were off for whether or not he would get this freedom that was promised. Ownership of Quap was passed on from James to his widow, Isabel. And Isabel actually saw eye to eye with James and decided, you know what? I'm gonna give Quok his freedom when he turns 21. Even better, right? But unfortunately, Isabel decides to marry a man named Nathaniel Jennison, which maybe they were happy in their marriage, that's great. But Isabel passed away five years into their marriage and Nathaniel had different ideas as far as freeing Quok went. We're passing by the area where Nathaniel Jennison owned property in the 1700s. This is where Quok would have lived and worked and would have been frustrated that he could not be free. Quok turned 21 and Nathaniel did not give him his freedom. Quok turned 25, no freedom. Quok turned 28 and still no freedom in sight. So Quok decided, forget this. And he left the Jenison's property. He fled to the one place where he knew he could work, earn a living and be free. Quok escaped to go work for Seth and John Caldwell. That's right, I said Caldwell, as in two brothers who were part of the family of James. That is the former farmhouse of James Caldwell, and this is the former property. Evidently, they convinced him to come up to where their property was for him to work there and to be a free man. Nathaniel quickly figured out where Quok escaped to and came up to the Caldwell's property and said to Quok, you are my property. You cannot be here with the Caldwell's. But Quok was not listening. He must have said to Nathaniel, hey, I was promised freedom. I'm not going back with you. And he did not go back. But then Nathaniel returned with a couple of men and severely beat Quok and dragged him off of the property. This must have been incredibly traumatic for Quok, but he found the courage to lawyer up and to sue Nathaniel for his past due freedom and for the assault and battery. Three court cases went down around Quok's situation, two civil cases and one criminal case. The civil cases took place right here in Worcester in 1781. This is the former location of the Worcester County Court of Common Pleas. But that building is not here anymore. But I did learn from Revolutionary Worcester that that building was dismantled and rebuilt into a private home that's not too far from here, up that way, and it is beautiful. And anyway, so this building that's behind me right now, this also was a courthouse. However, now it's lofts. It was converted somewhat recently. And the really cool part is that there's a museum here that's dedicated to Major Taylor, who was a world champion cyclist, a black man. So I can't wait to go inside. But not today. We are focused on Quok. So let's dig into what happened in those three court cases. 
Case number one, Quok versus Jettison. With representation from big name attorneys, Levi Lincoln and Caleb Strong, Quok sued Nathaniel Jennison for his past due freedom and for assault and battery. And the lawyers won the case for Quok, which meant that he was a free man and the court charged Nathaniel 50 pounds. So obviously Nathaniel tried to appeal this, but something happened with the paperwork his lawyers didn't file it or something along those lines. So they were not able to complete the appeal, which meant the verdict stood. Case number two, Jennison versus Caldwells. Nathaniel Jennison decided to sue the Caldwell brothers for interfering with his property. Property meaning his slave, his slave meaning quack. And the court sided with Nathaniel and charged 25 pounds to the Caldwells for the, the situation. Seems a little contradictory to what happened in the other case, right? Well, the Caldwells did end up appealing the case and they won the appeal. So the decision was then reversed. Case number three, Commonwealth versus Jennison. Two years later in 1783, Nathaniel was tried on criminal charges by the Supreme Judicial Court of Massachusetts for assault and battery of Quok. The prosecution and the defense focused their arguments around the status of Quok, whether he was a free man or whether he was property. Because if he was property as a slave, then technically they could justify Nathaniel's action because people can do what they like to their property no matter how terrible it may seem. But at some point of the case, the Chief Justice William Cushing said to the jury, yo, okay, he didn't say yo, but follow me here. <laughs> he said to the jury, it doesn't make any sense to argue over the status of Quok, not with our new constitution of Massachusetts. Slavery is inconsistent with this new constitution because it says that all men are born free and equal and that all individuals or all subjects are entitled to liberty that is protected by the law. So with this information and the arguments that were made in the court, long story short, the jury did find Nathaniel guilty and they charged him 40 shillings. These three court cases were a big deal for Quok and the state of Massachusetts. The cases affirmed that Quok was finally a free black man. And the final case, the Commonwealth versus Jenison, is considered to be the implied legal ending of slavery in Massachusetts. That's huge. I feel like I have to mention though, Quok is not the only person that sued to get freedom. There were quite a few black people who were enslaved that went to court in order to get their freedom, including Elizabeth Mumbet Freeman, and her case was a precursor to the Commonwealth versus Jenison case. And so, yes, we can be excited about 1783 being the year of the implied legal end of slavery in Massachusetts, but I feel like we need to temper it because it wasn't as though the verdict was broadcasted loudly and proudly. It wasn't like there was a bell that was rung for enslaved black people to know that they were free and that they could be liberated out in the streets. That is not what happened. The end of slavery was more of a gradual process that was very murky and unclear. And Quok's case was kind of like a milestone toward ending slavery. But back to Quok, he was very brave to leave the place where he was enslaved and then to sue his former master for his freedom. This changed his life and changed life for black people all around Massachusetts, New England and beyond, even if it was a slow process. So there you have it, another black gem unearthed. You can see in the description my different sources that I used and you can read and continue to learn on your own. So I'm off to go find some food. Until next time. <laughs>
black-owned vegan restaurant. Looks pretty good. Voted best vegetarian restaurant by the readers of Worcester Magazine. Okay, looks pretty good to me. The sandwich is pretty huge. Look at it. The bread looks amazing. This is a vegan crab cake. I'm really excited to taste what this is like.